Hey, what's up? So let's search the webcam. Hey, how is people? Easter, huh? Break? What is that? What is even that? We take breaks now? Wait, what? That must be something new. Doesn't sound, doesn't sound right. Yeah, so that's the question, right? So I think if nobody doesn't have any other uh, suggestions, that's probably better. I'm going to take a look at a C2 framework that Netitude Labs make uh, that called, that's called Posh C2. Um, we're going to take a look at that and then we're going to look at the... Well, I'm going to show you how to deploy that on the host uh, with the fender on it. Just a simple MC bypass, both in C Sharp and PowerShell. Do that first and then deploy the, the beacon, see how that works. And then we might look into the actual source, co source code and uh, run it through like uh, a threat check or something to find the signatures that the Fender has for the beacon. And, and might, might, we might end up patching that. I'm not doing a super long stream today uh, just because it's Easter, but uh, we'll see how far we'll get. So I'm actually just setting up the VMs for this right now. I'm a bit short on time. So let me see if hopefully, yeah. So I got my Windows VM, which I will be doing some dev work in. And then I got my Kali VM, and this is actually a completely fresh install. Uh, so I need to set my keyboard uh, preferences here first. So Norwegian, thank you very much. Thank you, and then we remove the English, and then, then we should, yeah. No, that's not correct. What is going on? I didn't change it. Let's see. Layout. Cuba Layout Norwegian. What are you even talking about? Okay, there we go. Just took some time before I hit. So that's fine. Also, I hate trans transparent windows. I see like uh, no point of having transparent backgrounds on terminal terminals. Just makes it a bit messy. Right. So I guess we have to find uh, the Porsche C2. Get a page first, right? I gotta show you that. So it's a C sharp based framework. Uh, again, that Netitude Labs make. Uh, it doesn't have an API. It doesn't have any fancy GUI. I am per personable, like a fan of that. I love the uh, tab to auto complete uh, rich help menus that Posh C2 brings in their terminal. So I'm, I'm actually a fan of that. Uh, Cobol is great and everything. Obviously, Cobol is paid for. This is free. Um, and open source. So I believe uh, there's a couple of ways you can install it. Uh, you can use the install script which, directly from their master branch. I think they have like, yeah, they have Docker image, yeah, and then they also have some, I believe they have some like, I, I think they have uh, Python environments built straight into the installer, we'll see. So before I mess anything up, I'm going to grab a quick snapshot of this VM. I'm going to call it stream VM. So I have that in case I mess up my clean call image. And then I'm just going to install it. I'll, uh, I'll go into temp uh, so the install script doesn't drop everywhere. Uh, there we go. We're installing Posh. Uh, and then I believe we need a VM that has antivirus enabled. So I'm thinking, I think the fender is like strictly disabled on this VM. Okay, so I can enable it. So I could do that. Okay, so I might do that. Then I'll just clean up my uh, streaming VM here a bit. Everything I have here is pushed on GitHub anyhow, so. It doesn't really matter that much. Where's this document? Sharp proxy logon. Get rid of that. 
temp. Let's get rid of that stream. Yeah, just deleting a bunch of stuff so we can get get that. Then uh, we'll rest the paper tray. We'll clean out the recycle bin, and then I guess I'll enable uh, enable defender back on. Um, okay, so hmm, cloud river delivery protection. If we were developing some internal stuff, that was super super secret. We didn't. We won't want that enabled. Uh, so I guess we'll disable it and only leave the green tower protection on. Uh, I see there's an update here. Honestly. Uh, it's just some net stuff. I'm just gonna ignore that. But I think I'm gonna do a quick check exclusions. No exclusions, that's good. Then I'm gonna do a quick like fast scan, yeah, quick scan. While push installs. So how have your Easter been? If you celebrate Easter, I guess not not everybody celebrates Easter, right? Depends on where you're located in the world. Too much candy. Is there such a thing? Really though, is there such a thing? Yeah, so yeah, I, I mean I I'm pretty sure I recall uh Posh C2 setting up visual environments out of the box. Uh yeah. So that's that's nice. They don't fuck up all the dependencies on your machine. So what's the thing I think I like the most about Posh C2 is that it's super easy to modify the source code to make your beacons, you know, semi undetectable at least, uh, at least just getting rid of the signatures. So if I believe I, I'm, I'm kind of spitballing here, I, I don't recall where that is located. I think it's in resources and payloads or something, payloads, templates, there we go. So they have all these templates that they will generate payloads from uh, when it's ran. So you can go into the CS file and then you see, okay, they, this is the template they use and you can, uh, you can play with this, get, get this signature undetected, maybe implement your own MC bypass. Same goes for dropper.cs. I believe this basic, let's see what this does. So it's, uh, okay, this is pretty cool. Hmm. Okay, so this is a check on the environmental variables to make sure that we're targeting the, the correct host. That is good. Good OPSEC. Hides the window. And then, uh, depending on the retries, uh, it will attempt to start a new thread. And that thread uh, is probably somewhere further down the line here. Yeah, right. So it will get a. This looks like a stager. Staging, decrypting, and then basically just running that stage, you're probably invoking it at something. But yeah, so it's it's fairly easy to go into these stagers and take a look at them and implement uh, signature patches and stuff like that. So they have like a PowerShell dropper as well. There's one particular here that I'm, I'm I like. Uh, I want it's not that one. I'll show you later on. It's definitely not this one. This is way too big, big to for the one I'm talking about. Okay, so anyhow, so let's set up Posh. Uh, the first thing you do is actually create a new project. So we got to do Posh uh, project and then a new project, so project name. Let's call it Stream Demo. And then I'm not sure if I need to do sudo here, we'll find out, right? So now we create a new project. If we do, I think it's posh project straight out, we'll see uh, some options. If you do L, we can now see that it lists out that they have this project and that this is the current project that we are 
our I guess have in our active slot, right? Look at the the chart behind there. And then we go into posh config, and since I'm a, I'm a nano pleb, I gotta do dash dash nano, or else it's gonna open in Vim or Via. I'm gonna be all out of my comfort zone, straight up. So you set the bind IP for a server, if your server has multiple network interfaces and you don't wanna bind to every one of them, you just basically uh, select the IP you're assigned. Uh, it does support the main front thing, um, so you basically you can set this front header as your CDN and then just point it to uh, domain front of all domain and you have the main fronting set up and then there's a uh, user agent server header stuff like that you can change as well and I think in the more uh, in the more hot when you're attacking I guess more modern uh, organizations these are going to be valuable to to sort of I guess tell the story that you're trying to sell to the defense right uh, what is this service? Why is it running? What should the server respond as, etc. For this, I, I won't even bother. Uh, but what I'm going to do, I need to set the payload com host. So I need to find my IP address here in the yeah, in my virtual in my VM uh, LAN network. I just gotta make sure that that's correct. Yeah, it's on that, right? So if I go to my Windows host, just gotta make sure I can ping that so I know it's alive. Yep, so they can reach each other. That's awesome. Then I gotta set this. Like that. Uh, and that's basically it. So we can set the default sleep time, get to time, kill date. If you use this on an engagement and you're sort of playing with it, set kill date. Kill date is such an underrated feature. I mean, being 100% sure that when you leave the engagement uh, that all the beacons are dead that you're not gonna leave I mean leaving binaries on this behind is bad but like having active binaries calling out when you're done with the engagement that's horrible so you always want to set the correct kill date so I'm gonna actually do that so I'm gonna do 2021 the month let's do this month and then I'm gonna set it to a couple of days from now just to make sure right just just for good opposite good measure Kill date, undervalued feature for sure. And then you have some default migration process options. This might, you know, you might see some uh, simulators here with the Cobalt Strike uh, configuration profiles. Okay, what process should I migrate and run from by default, etc. So you have payload domain check. Uh, uh, so this is basically also a very good OPSEC options. If you know the internal domain of a target that you're uh, deploying on, then set this. Then you know the beacon won't run on any other machine that isn't domain zone. Great OPSEC, great. It, I mean, it's basically a sandbox uh, sort of, I guess, bypass. It's uh, in, like very automatic ways of get, get, gathering signatures from files won't be able to gather or identify this file as malicious if it doesn't run then it would need manual, uh, I guess manual labor, it would need a reverse engineer or someone like that to go in and take a look at it. Um, I'm not gonna set that either because I don't think the machine I'm, I'm working on now is the main joint. So that's fine, we basically only set payload com host, which is uh, the server, the server that it's supposed to connect back to, which is gonna be my local IP. And then you can just do sudo posh, God, I can't type today. And it will spin up the server. And this is one of the things I love about Posh. Based on these templates, it will now auto generate all a bunch of different payloads for you to gain code execution on the machine or gain the full loads, right? So it will generate a beautiful PowerShell uh, stager in the one line. It will generate an HTA payload. It will generate the DLL payload that you could use for app locker bypass, right? It will generate an MSTA payload if you want to use pre-scripting and open drop any files. It will generate a bunch of DLL, shell codes, JavaScript, I mean, normal EXEs as well, a bunch of these. And this is, I love it. I just, having this pre-generated, it, it, it's, it's such a, yeah, it's, it takes it off the pain away. It's awesome. Uh, right, so, um, so this is what I wanted to get into. I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll give it a run first to show you how what it can do, and then we go back into uh, using Omsi on this. So 
So now it's up and running um, and the kill date is in two days as we said it. We even have the macro payload. There's so much here to go into. It's awesome. So uh, so this is the, I would I guess you would call it the team server or the server that runs the, the, the functionality and the beacon hosting and stations and stuff like that. And then obviously we want to connect to this server to be able to do commands on the beacon. So the way we do that is we do posh just posh and then we do user that we want to log in as and then we'll do see i'll do melvin it's the mount pseudo great and then i'm in and on and when beacons pop up they will come in here and i can access them so let's uh for for funsies just to the uh just to demonstrate posh let's uh take this partial stager and drop it into our vm and with windows defender enabled it should catch it i say should because i'm never too sure oh my god Right, so we can drop this in CMD. I, I'm pretty sure, is it too long for this? Yeah, it's too long for the WR, but it works in pure CMD. You drop it in and then it gets detected, obviously, because we haven't done anything to it yet. So it won't run. Uh, let's just uh, turn off real-time protection for now, just so we can test it. We'll drop it again, it disappears. And then if you go back to our machine, we scroll down on our server, we'll see that uh, a new implant has, detect has been uh, connected it has been given a stager uh, and then it says you know this is a 64 bit implant MC is detected migrate to avoid anti malware scalable interface uh, what power show you running on um, uh, yeah if it if, if it knows or not, uh, constraint mode whatever and uh, then if I refresh this we can see our beacon I can select that beacon I can type help and I'll get a bunch of nice examples I mean yeah, if you don't have a master cheat sheet from before, this is awesome stuff. I'll move this over here so you can see it. All right, so there's, and th this beacon now is running in pure PowerShell. Um, so if I wanted to say, let's say, okay, this beacon here runs in pure PowerShell. We can see that by the PS tag defined at the end of the list. Let's say I want to move into C Sharp because I know that their C, their C, C Sharp beacon has a lot of built in C Sharp functionality. I can do inject, I can first do PS to list all the processes on the machine. So one, one thing to know about Posh is that you write the commands here, but the output gets printed to the server. Uh, okay, so let's, let's find a target I want to inject into. Let's, let's use your phone.exe, it's a 64-bit process. It runs under 420. <laughs> that's a nice that's coincidence. So the PID is 420. We can do inject shellcode. Uh, and then I believe uh, it's 420 for the PID. Uh, yeah, so we give it a PID and then we basically give it the location of the shellcode. Now normally if this was Cobalt or any other uh, classical C2 framework, you would have to specifically go and generate shellcode. But Posh already have done this for you. So if I just start to type shellcode, sorry, if I do tap to autocomplete, it will list out all the different payloads that we have generated already. So I can just choose, let's use the Posh V4 64-bit shellcode and see if we get a call back on that one. So I probably used that command wrong. I'm just guessing. So I think if you run it without giving it anything, it will just create the, uh, the, the spawn through process for you. Let's try that. If the beacon didn't die. So I never had this issue before. I probably did something wrong. Yeah, okay. Let's just rerun that beacon for now. So I just have to scroll back to the top here and grab that PowerShell stager again. So I did. I did the mistake by giving. Uh, I did the mistake by giving inject shell code a pet, which you should not do. Uh, inject shell code will spawn a new process and then put the shell code back into that. So there we go. Now we got the new uh, sharp uh, uh, sharp uh, beacon running. So it says that inject shell code new suspend suspend process. It it suspends a new process of net sh. Then it injects into that process. And then we have our new beacon. So if we go back, click enter, we can see that we now have a new PowerShell beacon. Uh, okay, so I used the wrong shellcode here. So let's do three again. 
inject shell code and then we want to use a sharp beacon so let's use sharp v464 bit and when that runs it should give us a proper sharp beacon back that's the that's where the functionality that we want lies so if we go back here back now we see that we have a sharp beacon and that's very different in posh if i go in through this sharp beacon and type help you can see that it has a bunch of sharp modules already ready to run and you can add your own pretty easily so rubius is already there mimikatz is already there some safety dump is already there as well as sharp view sharp vmi all those nasty uh, sharp modules that we we attackers like as well as sharp pound right so if i wanted to run sharp pound now I, I just copy this that's all i would do i just copy this from the help cheat sheet run it and then the server would load the sharp pound module obviously this user isn't in the active directory context so it would just error out but it ran it and this would work awesome uh, okay so that's cool but this won't get us far if we can't get it by antivirus right we need to so obviously i'm going to be targeting defender for this um so let's just kill these uh, i think it's just kill all no that's a task right so i have to then exit i think or is it remove kill kill implant there we go i want to kill the implant back and then three kill implant yes i want to kill the implant back they could probably add like a kill all that would be nice if they don't already have it they might i might just be stupid there we go so i kill all the implants so we can start all over again awesome so if i go back in here and i turn turn on real-time protection windows defenders now on uh, there's still a couple of ways we should be able to get around this so um, if you want the quick and dirty way uh, you go over to AMC fail <laughs> shameless plug and then you grab yourself a powershell AMC uh, bypass patcher destroyer call it whatever you want it will basically force AMC running in the current process to die so let's uh, take one of the smaller ones so let's do uh, this one for example so i actually i think the first stream i did i i went back into the mc file project and fixed some signatures so we'll see if if the fender has already caught up we'll see i'll go into a new powershell uh, uh process and if i type mc in it failed defender should tell me that that's malware obviously that's not malware but defender has some very basic string detections so stuff like I'm seeing it fail will throw a malicious error. And then I paste it, basically paste in the bypass. That went through. And if I try to type I'm seeing it fail now, it will give me a different error. It will tell, tell me that the term I'm seeing it fail is not recognized. That's true because that's not a commander or module, but it didn't tell me it's malicious. So this little snippet of obfuscated PowerShell code basically patched I'm for the current process. So now with Defender running, I should be able to run uh, that previous beacon, even though that's detected as it's super detected, right? So I so the thing here is we'll see. I'll try it this way first. I think we have to decode this base sixty four and run what's inside of here uh, because this will spawn a new process. So I'll think we do that. I, I think we'll do that straight up. Um, so if you go to obviously you should never base sixty four decode online if you have a real payload. I just wanted to show you this. So if you go to base64decode.org and then you go down to, I think it's uh, UTF16LE. That's the base, base six, that's by default. That's the way uh, PowerShell base, that's the encoding format that PowerShell encodes and decodes. So if I copy this in here and I go decode, it will print out the actual payload uh, that was basically for encoded. If you try to do this using the normal UTF-8, it will give you this. So that's a pro tip if you didn't know that. The encoding format or the encoding scheme for PowerShell by default on Windows is UTF-16LE. So now I should be able to copy this back into the same PowerShell session if, if I can copy. And then it runs and defender hasn't told me anything and if i go back into uh, posh and i scroll all the way down i should see a new beacon yep i got a new beacon i refresh that's how we got past defender basically 
Uh, but keep in mind, this is only PowerShell. This is only PowerShell. If you try to do this and then run, say, a binary, if you, if you have, if you somehow still have the binary on disk, or if you're running from a UNC path or something, the Fender will trigger. This is only for AMSI in the context of the PowerShell EXE process as you were running. It will not patch AMSI system wide. It will not help help run some other C sharp binary. Only PowerShell. So I can go in here and I can do who am I? If that's not great, I know. Uh, let's see. Let's just check that it actually runs any commands. Or did it get detected? <clears throat> Hello? It's still running. It's still running. Why can't I see the outputs? Did I accidentally click no or something? Okay, let's try something else. Let's do help. Uh, let's try to run some other commands. So let's do... Uh, so get all services. She didn't enumerate all the services probably installed. Let's see if that runs. There we go. We got all the services running on the system. Um, Cred popper. So I think cred popper is just like a GUI to make the, the user paste in some credentials. Cred popper started running back to so Yeah, so I get this. So if I type in my awesome password, click enter, that will probably return here in like a couple of seconds time. Let's do, um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can do. I guess hash dump is a Sam dump. Okay, so now it actually tries to invoke Mimikatz and that doesn't work, yeah. Mimikatz doesn't work like that from PowerShell. You shouldn't do that. And that's because Defender has generic detections of Mimikatz. I think, at least. Uh, it might just be that Mimikatz exists in the memory. It might just be that stupid as well, but yeah. So you, you can't run Mimikatz. You shouldn't really do that on a target system anyhow. If you're doing, I guess, I mean, if you're doing, if you're doing the pen test, then who cares? But uh, yeah. Okay, so that's, that's cool, right? But let's say I want to run the, the sharp implant. How would I do that? So there's actually a way to do that as well, or there are a couple of ways. So, um, <laughs> so if you go to AMC fail, one of these payloads, uh, this one actually, is Rasta Mouse's AMC scan buffer patch. And this, this will uh, patch the actual uh, native AMC DLL in the process, not just the PowerShell function that it talks to. Uh, and then you can run you can effectively load C sharp through PowerShell and then run a new C sharp binary. Uh, you should be able to at least. So let's try to test this basically. If I copy this, open up a new PowerShell prompt, and then I basically run it. If I try, I'm seeing it failed. It says it doesn't exist, so it patched it, right? But the, uh, so just to show now, uh, if I, obviously if I try to move any C-sharp binary to disk, the fender is going to catch me. So I have to uh, use reflective loading within PowerShell to, to load the binary over the network. So I could host the binary on the UNC path on the SMB share through uh, SMB server, SMB client in Impacket, right? And then I can just fetch for that, load it over uh, the wire or internet and reflectively load it through PowerShell. So I'm going to show off that. So I need the... To, to do that, I first need the PowerShell snippet to reflectively load uh, C sharp binaries. And I think I know where I can find it. I want to show you guys this great resource as well. So there is this website. Oh my god, how am I even gonna try? Kaswan Kuten? Kaswan Kut? I don't, I'm, 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 I'm killing it, I'm sorry. It's basically an AD cheat sheet. And I think it has like a. Some PowerShell wooden liners that you can use to reflectively load. Yeah, load C-sharp assemblies reflectively. 
Uh, so there's one you can you can download and run it from an HTTP uh, host that would probably be the easiest. Load it as a variable and then reflectively load it. Uh, that would probably be the easiest to be honest, uh, right? Uh, the thing about this is that you need to know the program namespace and class, the main class, to be able to execute it. So I'll show you how we can figure how we can find that. Uh, yeah, uh, we should probably make some code for that to do that automatically, but I won't do that now. So uh, this is basically the snippet we want, but to be able to do this, we need to host the binary on the server. So to do that, we will just uh, go into opt posh c2, uh, and then, oh sorry, it's on the var, I think. Yeah, posh c2, and then your project name. Then there's a folder called payloads, and this is where all the generated payloads are stored. Uh, so this is great. Uh, so we want to pick like a binary one that we can invoke. Uh, so let's pick, let's do ls and then we obviously, oh my god, ls, oh my god, what's wrong? And we grep for sharp and we do that in case sensitive. Uh, and then we want to grep for like .exe. So have a couple of ones. So let's use sharp before dropper. Let's not use migrate. Let's use this one. So let's just copy that one to temp, and then we see it back into temp. Okay, let's uh, let's make a new directory here. Server hosted. Let's move sharp into server hosted. Let's see it into and then uh, copy like that. Let me. Okay, I'll then move it. So let's go there, and then we can do Python 3 m um, HTTP server, and then we can host HTTP server on port 80,000 uh, with that binary. And for good measure, let's just remove it. So let's just, I mean, let's just rename it. Sorry, let's just do sharp, and then let's call it the game.exe because why not, right? And then we can host it. So if we go to our Windows server now, we can go to that IP. Oh, which I think I won't be able to recall. Is it 129? And then, oh my God, Bing. No, it is not. So it's 133. There we go, and then we can find our beacon. But obviously if we try to download this, the vendor is gonna be like, hell no. Uh, keep. I, if I say I want to keep it anyway, pretty sure Defender won't let me run it. Uh, or did I... Wait, what? So telling Internet Explorer to keep it will get it past AV? No, it won't. No way. Yeah, no, it won't run. No way. Uh, Defender is at it right now. We're going to get a message prompt soon. Anyhow. So that's how we host it, obviously. So that would be... Uh, a part of this reflectively load uh, a snippet here, like so that this would be that part. But then we still need to know uh, what a uh, namespace and class the main function for that binary is located in. And to do that, uh, we can use my favorite C sharp errors, I guess, decompiler, right? So I'm just going to disable that for a bit, and then this is going to fail. So I'm just going to restart Explorer for good measure. Oh my god. Sorry guys, I'm a bit, I'm slow today. It's been a long Easter. Right, so I'm just gonna turn it off and then I'm going to grab dnspire from GitHub, uh, which is awesome. I think it has been archived. It isn't actively developed anymore, so I'm guessing, I'm looking for forks anyway, if anybody has a good fork for this. But this is by far my favorite decompiler. If anything could load, okay. Okay. okay, what is what what is happening? Let's try again. There we go. DN Spy, right? So it has been archived. The latest updates from some December 2020, so it's not old or anything. Uh, but this is definitely awesome. So I'm, no, that didn't run, that's great. So DN Spy. Let's pop that open. Uh, 
and then I'll open the inspire and then I, I need to disable defender just so I can get the binary on disk uh, or keep the binary on disk like that and if we go into wait why is there this a native it's probably because it got overwritten should be a C sharp binary not an ATP file let's retry that let's keep it keep it anyway Wait, why is this a PE? This should be a sharp file. What did I do wrong here? This should without a doubt be a sharp V4 file. Hmm. So that's weird. Um, uh, okay, I'll, I'll guess we We'll do it the dirty way. We're just gonna var posh project name payloads. I'm gonna just gonna start the server in there so we can browse them. I was trying to do it nicely by just picking out the ones that we wanted, but apparently I'm too bad. So we could try this dropper.csldxe. I think I think this is the one I usually modify manually if I want it to be undetectable. Yeah, so this is uh, this is a C sharp file. We can see that it's if you go into the pros uh, program and then we look for main main. Uh, it just runs program dot sharp. So I, what would the namespace for this be? I guess program dot sharp is all we need. Yeah, just program dot sharp. I thought we needed a namespace as well, but there isn't one. So I'm gonna go for program.sharp. Let's just try that. Um, so if we go into our browser here, and then we just uh, right click on dropper.cs.dxe, and then we copy link. I'm gonna open notepad here and just paste, get that in there. So we have the link. Go back to here, we take the our snippet of code, and then we replace this with this. And then we replace this. Uh, so what would rev be? Hmm. Let's just try dropper.c. I see what happens. Since there is no namespace to find in the end space, bye. Type not found. Hmm. Just program. Yeah, we need more than that. Okay, so let's try to find the namespace here. This is just Hmm, I thought there was a way we could save this. Yeah, okay, so we could save it, okay. <laughs> so this is the modified one. Just gonna try this real quick, see what happens. So we ne we call that foo bar, right? Okay, so that worked, but uh, I think the problem all along uh, wasn't the namespace. Was, I think his <laughs> snippet was bad, so I'll have to update that. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, okay, so let's let's redo this. I'll just give it another shot, just to make sure it works here. Let's try copy directory, dropper CS, copy link, and then I'll do this.
So we can't find full bar, that's fine. Let's try to remove that. That worked. Okay, so it works without a namespace. That's awesome. Uh, so this is the snippet we want to run then, basically. Uh, together with our OMC fail bypass. So where was that? Let's go back to OMC fail and get that. And then I'll turn on Defender and I'll show you. So we want to get the one that says OMC scan buffer patch. We got that on our first try. That's awesome. Let's remove Rustle Mouse. Let's do this. And then we'll save it as. I just want to see if if get uh, our stager. There we go. And then I'll exit out of this. Delete those files. Stop that. Uh, cancel. Uh, no. Mineral. Nope. I'll copy this to my clipboard for safekeeping, just in case uh, Defender deletes it. Uh, let's turn off real time. Uh, let's turn back on real time protection if the fender is gonna let me. Okay, this is weird. I think I broke the fender. I wasn't even trying to. I'm gonna kill these implants meanwhile. Yeah, I broke the fender and I wasn't even trying to. That's sad. That's sad in so, on so many levels, that's sad. Okay, so it looks like... Uh, I'm just going to copy this onto my main computer desktop, meanwhile. It does look like I have to reboot this VM. <sighs> Let's try that. But basically, uh, what you do is that you, you go into the uh, payloads folder and then you file and you take the file that's called dropper underscore cs you reflectively load that after you use you have used your MC scan buffer patch from Master mouse that you can get uh, without signatures from the fail so it will be this and then just the three snippets we needed to to reflectively load the c sharp binary over wire or over internet so just need this one to reboot meanwhile So if any of you guys aren't in the trust the sec uh, discord, you should totally join that. <coughs> oh, sorry. Give me a second. I'll, I'll send you the, um, the link. So I think this is the link. Let me just confirm that before I send something weird in the chat. Yeah, so you guys should totally join the uh, Trusted like Discord. Just use that link right there. We also have a Slack channel. You can, if you're if you're more of a Slack type, you can use this one here. The Trusted like Discord is awesome. Most of us from Trusted like are there, and you can ask us questions. We are super friendly, no worries at all. Just hit us up. Uh, oh my God, this VM. I should have known that in this update would probably take me down the stream. I should have known. 100% bad on my part. Oh, come on. Oh, wow, it, it just jumped to 90 when I opened it. I should leave this open. What? Oh. 
Wow. So the, I just want to... I just want to state that this is a dirty way of getting around Defender specifically without having to modify the posh payloads. Obviously, um, it's it would be also rather easy to uh, to modify the posh payload directly and then just check for signatures using one of the many uh, signature checkers out there. So Rasta Mouse has one that's called uh, it's called like Threat Check. Which they're all based on the same one, so let me find the one. It's super useful. So let me check his repos here. So he has one called Threat Check, I believe. Oh look, he <laughs> he he forked. Uh, threat to check, yeah, this one. Which basically takes uh, a file and just runs it through the AMP engine on your computer and just spits out uh, at what offset the detection was. This is super useful to to find that specific string or function name or whatever uh, in your C-sharp code that's detectable or that has a signature by Defender. Uh, so you can use that. It's In the end, it's just based on Matterpreter, uh, Matterpreter, I don't care. I don't, I don't even care. I'm that cool. Uh, sorry for butchering the name. It's all based on his Defender check, which is basically the same. And this is probably a more cleaned up version. I know there's another one that's called like AMC check or something that's also based on Defender check. There's so many. They all basically do the same. They they chunk up the binary in pieces and then run them through uh, um, uh, the AMC engine. And when AMC engine tells them that this specific like chunk of data is detected, then it chunks down and down and down until they find a specific chunk in the chunk of data that is detected and it shows you basically what you need to change. Okay, so we're back, awesome. So I need to enable Defender, it probably is already enabled uh, because when you reboot, Defender will go like, yeah, let's turn back on. And then I have my station payload here, which is basically, again, AMC bypass patching the native AMC uh, function in the AMC DLL that will allow us to reflectively load some C-sharp code through PowerShell. So let's just copy this and put it straight into PowerShell. It runs, Defender didn't say anything, and if we go back to our posh instance, we have another beacon. Awesome, right? Refresh, yep, we have a beacon. And since AMC is patched for this entire function, we can do a lot more now in this function. Uh, I mean, sorry, this process. So if you go help, we can, you can run your own uh, C-sharp binary. This is super useful. If I wanted to, if I found a, an exchange server on-prem on this network, I could uh, uh, dynamically load the sharp uh, proxy logon and just exploit that server. Um, yeah, bunch of stuff, bunch of lateral movement stuff. A sharp pound is baked in, sweet potato is baked in, safety dump, and Mimikatz is baked in. Running Mimikatz on the host is probably not a good idea, but uh, dumping might work. That's actually that's that's try that. I wanna. I want to try that. So let's do what happens if we only do safety dump. But I haven't played around with it that much. Dump written to this. Okay, let's check stream demo downloads. Uh, cool. Why did it run? Did it run? Is it hidden or did it get stopped? Oh no. Obviously, my process isn't high integrity, so it won't be able to reach out fast. Lol. Uh, yeah. Again, if you haven't tried out Posh C2 and you're looking for a good alternative to something paid, or if you don't just don't like Covenant, take like Covenant is great, but I, I'm not like Covenant is great. It's a piece of work, uh, open source framework, but but Posh is just mwah. Martin can testify. 100% Martin can testify. Yay, uh, me! Porsche C2 is just the thing, the thing for sure. Uh, yeah, so I think that's gonna be. I said I was gonna do a short stream today. Uh, but if anybody has any suggestions for the next stream, that's awesome. Hit me up on Twitter or here. I think for the next stream, I might go into actually compiling some code, running it against a threat check, 
showing you guys how you can patch your signatures, some neat tricks in C sharp, and then try to actually make an undetectable posh two beacon that you don't need to patch AMC for, or that will patch the AMC itself when running on target. Um, yeah, check out posh two C two. It's it's freaking awesome. Um, because I think if I try to do anything related to Mimikatz, let's try for walls. I'm pretty sure Mimikatz is still like a no no. Uh, I think I think they have like proper detection. So let's run the high integrity PowerShell uh, PowerShell process. Paste that same stager back in. Then we get another shell. Uh, that shell should now be go back. It should now be high integrity. And you can tell that by the wildcard character at the end of the username, it means it's high integrity. So if I go into nine, I do search help, and then I do cats. Uh, we have a bunch of mini cats modules. So let's try safety cats full. Or do you want to try, let's actually try mini dump again. Search help, dump. So let's try safety dump. See what happens. So it didn't trigger anything, but uh, as far as I can see, I haven't gotten a dump yet either. It claims the dump is supposed to be in downloads. Wait, with a lower caps? Is it in the wrong downloads directory? That would be funny, I guess. Okay, let's. Uh, Let's try to give it a PID. See so if I do, uh, if I go into here and I do PS and we can find the uh, SIS process. So LSAS is usually like a six, 600, 700 ish, depending on how the computer boots. Save the dump, let's see what it does. So again, it claims that it did do a dump. I see nothing. So that's probably either dead or being removed straight off disk. Uh, I guess, I mean, invoking Mimikatz like this. What? Do, does it do the, oh my God. I'm such a stupid man. Thank God for chat. Yeah, it's there. Lul. Ruffle. Damn. Getting schooled by chat today. So I guess it did work, right? Uh, now it basically tells me I have to run these PowerShell commands to get it decoded. And then I can load it up in Mimikatz. Cool. So that worked. Um, let's try... I, I guess we could also use PyCats, right? On, on the next. Let's try a hash dump. Or should we just go straight for the... Actually, let's try Safety Cats Mini Dump. Why not? See what Defender does about it. Stop. Shout out. Windows. It's in Windows temp, right? Cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's there. So that works. Defender doesn't catch that. But I'm guessing if I try to do it, so there's really no reason to run Mimikatz on host at all. You just dump it. Uh, dump it and parse it uh, on the tar attacker side. But I want to try because I'm a fool, basically. I want to try so bad. I want to try so bad. I'm going to go for it. Pretty sure like 9 out of 10 this should get caught. It really should. Oh my god, shut up. Oh, Defender, why are you so bad? There we have it. Well, I guess that's good to know. I genuinely would think this would get caught. But apparently it didn't. That's awesome. That's freaking awesome.
Yeah, but I think that's that's going to be today's stream. Uh, honestly, this Easter has been like a break for me, so I didn't feel like doing too long of a stream today. Next stream, I'll probably again go into using actual defender check then or threat check by Rasta. Uh, maybe I'll fork it. Maybe I'll add some automation to it. Do some do some of my own stuff. Um, and then uh, we'll take a look at uh, the dropper underscore cs dot cs file uh, that call uh, that um, posh generates. So that should be in uh, dropper dot cs. So it's this little thing right here, I think. Yeah, we'll we'll basically uh, compile this on our own machine. We'll Pull it to a thread check, we'll try to patch off the signatures. Uh, should be fairly straightforward. I'll, for funsies, I might also do run it through like a legacy obfuscator like Confuser X or something, just to see if that gains more signatures or if it actually removes some. I my hot take would be that it would actually gain more signatures by running it through Confuser X. We'll see. But yeah, that's basically it for today. I really appreciate all of you guys showing up uh it's uh yeah it's super fun i mean we um i i fucked up last week with the time zone changing so i was like an hour late uh but the streams before that and this has been pretty decent so we'll we'll uh, based on the follower count i'm getting and the viewer unique viewer count we are gaining in views every time so i'm gonna keep doing it for sure uh until i either get like a solid burnout or i straight up collapse That'd be super fun. Again, join. Be sure to join the Trusted Tech Discord. Uh, if you're living in uh, in the, one of the Nordic countries, if you speak in Norwegian, Swedish, Danish, uh, I, I'm on a podcast every week called Shellcast, five H three five H three L L Cast on Spotify and iTunes. Uh, so if you sh understand the uh, some of the Norwegian and uh, Nordic languages, be sure to give that a listen. It's super technical, no BS, low level stuff. Be sure to join in. So thank you so much for jumping on, really appreciate it, and I guess I'll see you same time next week.